How you guys doing? Can you guys put something in the comments? Put like a, a one in the comments or something if you could hear me. Or just say something. Maybe say where you guys are from. I just want to make sure that my audio is working. You should be able to see the Facebook reporting uh, black screen and then and then a picture of me. No. Can you guys hear me now? Just checking my mic. If you guys could say something in the comments, just put a one or say where you're from. Okay. Looks like it's working now. It came on on my phone. So you guys should be able to hear me. Um, let's do this. Let's, let's just make sure because I, I want to, uh, I, I heard it myself, but um, I'm just going to go ahead and comment. I'm going to say California. I'm from California. Uh, I'm going to put that in the comments. Why don't you guys comment where you are from while other people are coming in. We're going to talk about Facebook reporting. I don't want to get too in depth today. But um, I do want to go over the essentials, the things that I, I think you guys need to know for um, understanding your ad campaigns, what it is you should be looking at. Um, you know, as the oh, actually, you can't see the title yet. So let me go ahead and get rid of this black screen. Cool. I refreshed my my uh, the the comments, and it looked like there's you guys could hear me. So good, good, good. We're good to go. You get rid of this black screen and then, um, all right, cool. You guys should be able to see my screen now that says Facebook reporting. Uh, it says know what you are looking at, what you're looking for, and what you should be looking at, right? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to keep it simple. We're not going to talk about like what's CPM. We are going to talk about some uh, definitions, some terms, um, but we're not going to get into all the crazy uh, the crazy numbers, the crazy analytics um, and, and terminology or anything like that. This is just, you know, what, what's this, what can, how can I use reporting in my e-commerce business, um, you know, in its simplest form to, to help me run my campaigns, to make my, my campaigns uh, either successful or more successful. And so, um, you know, I titled this Facebook reporting, know what you're looking at what you're looking for and how you should be looking at it. And those are actually the three different topics that we're gonna to cover today is um, one, know what you're looking at, right? What, what does some of this stuff mean? We're gonna look at some terminologies and, and definitions. Um, and then we're gonna talk about what you're looking for. Like, what are the numbers you're looking for? What, what, what should I be seeing? What type of numbers should I be seeing um, in, in reporting, and when I'm looking at my Facebook ads campaigns, what should I be seeing? What, what does a good campaign look like? What does a bad campaign look like? Um, so what, what are you going to be looking for? And then how you should be looking at it. And so I'm going to show you how to set up some uh, reporting um, presets in your ads manager so that you could have, um, you know, just with a few clicks, you could quickly see the different metrics that you need to see depending on what type of campaign you're running. Sound good, you guys? Everything sound good, you guys? I'm gonna go ahead and refresh these comments. I wanna see here that, uh, you know, this is exciting to some of you. Um, as I said yesterday on the, the video yesterday, the live feed yesterday, was that, you know, I like numbers. I like digging in and doing research and, and that type of stuff. And, you know, if you really wanna be successful at this, you, you, you have to understand it to some degree. You can pay somebody else to do it at some point, but, you know, that's not what this group is about. This group is about figuring out ourselves, right? We're, that's what this 90 day challenge, this e-com challenge is about, is about, um, you know, getting in and, and doing it ourselves. So, um, you know, this is the stuff that you need to know, the basic stuff, uh, at least, uh, or rather not basic. This isn't really basic. This is, I would say that this is probably intermediate. This is, you know, after you've already got your first ads done, after you've already picked your products and, and put them on your store and got it, all of that done, now you got your ads running and now you just want to make sense of your ads, right? That's kind of like the second step. So I call that kind of intermediate. You're not making a lot of money, but you guys are getting your sales or at least trying to get sales or or at least running your ads. And, and so, um, 
you know, this isn't basic at all, but these are the essentials. These are the uh, elementaries of Facebook reporting. We can go way beyond what I'm going to show you today. So you guys sound, sound, uh, does it sound good to you guys? Cool. We got, got people all over from this group. That's what I like about it. Um, you know, that's what I love about the internet and, and Facebook is that we have, um, you know, such a, a connection with, um, with each other that we can, you know, people say that the internet, uh, breaks up relationships, but it actually creates relationships. So awesome to see so many people from all over the place. Um, I wanted to, before actually jumping in, I was waiting to see if more people would come in, but it's already 2.08. So let's just go ahead and jump in to uh, the next slide. <clears throat> so we're talking about Facebook reporting. Uh, the first thing I said we're going to look at is uh, to know what you're looking for. And so let's talk about some of these definitions. You know, what, what are some of the uh, terms that we need to know? Um, as I said in a minute ago, I'm not going to go really in depth into all of the terms. However, if you want to uh, learn more about them, which I recommend that you should, you should be wanting to learn all about Facebook ads. Um, th here's a link right here. If you don't want to type out that link, I don't know how, how maybe I'll put this actually, I'll put this in the comments right now. Um, I'm going to open it up for you, but then I'm going to grab it and I'm going to put it in the comments so you guys have it. And you guys can go here and learn all about the various terms uh, within Facebook ads. It's a glossary of ad terms, right? You guys, how many guys are, um, how many guys think you know the ad terms, feel comfortable with like, you know what CTR is and, and what, what the difference between a link click and a, and a click is. Do you guys, you guys familiar with that? Or does, does some, does this, um, does this seem like this can be helpful for some of you? If it does, if it seems like it's going to be helpful for you guys, then what I recommend you doing is definitely coming and looking at these glossaries of terms because, um, you know, this is going to be way beyond, this is going to put your knowledge way beyond what we could put in an hour or two here on, uh, here in this one, one hour live webinar. Okay. So, um, we're only going to go over a few of these. We're not going to go over this entire, uh, list. As I said, this is just for you and your knowledge. Um, so without further ado, let me go ahead and jump to the next slide. Sorry guys, got a baby in the background. Uh, they're getting ready to go out the door right now. So I'm working from home today. That's that's the luxury of an internet business, luxury of a, a uh, e-commerce business. I have a, a huge facility, a 9,000 square foot warehouse, but I work from home. I'm work, sitting on my kitchen table and, and looking at my baby right now. So um, you know, awesome stuff. This is what you guys, this, I'm sure this is why you guys join the group so that, that, um, you know, you want that you want, whether you have it or not already, you know, it's a nice life to, to be able to live on the internet, but, um, there was a slight interruption. So next slide, this is what I want to talk about. These are the, the definitions or the first definition that I want to talk about today. Uh, what you are looking at definitions and terms, I, I guess, same title, <laughs> the difference between licks, link clicks and clicks. So there's clicks all and link clicks, right? And so uh, we want you to know the difference between these two, because when you're looking at your reporting, somebody might say, well, what's your, what's, um, what's your click through rate for your link clicks, right? And we're going to talk about what click, click through rate is in a minute. Um, but somebody might say, what's your click through rate for your clicks? And, and you want to know which one you're talking about, because if you don't know, you know, you could be way off, right? Your link clicks could cost double what your clicks cost, right? And, and if, you know, if you run into that situation where your link clicks are costing double the, your click cost, but you're telling somebody, you know, the wrong cost and you're trying to get some help, well, you're not going to get the right help and you're really not going to understand uh, the, the um, reporting and the metrics yourself. So, um, you know, Link clicks and clicks, there's a big difference in those. And I'm going to show you guys what, what all of this is within the reporting. Um, but, you know, I want you to understand that there is a difference right now. I'm going to go over the technical stuff in the slides, and then we're going to go to the, um, the reporting section in Business Manager. And we're actually going to um, look at this stuff in action. So right now I'm just trying to pour the information into your head, and then we're going to follow it back up with like some live in action stuff. So don't get, don't get overwhelmed if you're like, I'm, I'm already confused. What the heck is a click or like, you know, they, they kind of make sense, but I understand how they cannot make sense because some of this stuff didn't make sense to me when I first got started. So, um, 
you know, as I said, I'm going to show you the technical stuff and then, you know, through PowerPoint, and then I'm actually going to show you it to you how it, um, you know, how it plays out. So just follow through and try to remember this stuff and understand that you can watch through these videos as, you know, as many times as you want. So difference between link clicks and clicks all. Clicks all is going to include things like a like, a share, a comment, a click on an image, a click to the to the um, to the uh, page. There's several different, you know, a lot of different clicks depending on what type of post you have that can be included in the clicks all. I have a feeling I'm going to get tongue tied a few times here in this webinar. Uh, if you want to hear a good one, go watch the webinar from yesterday. Uh, but every all, all types of clicks on the post can be included in the clicks all. Link clicks are just what they sound like. Link clicks. They just you're just clicking on a link, right? So two completely different metrics, and you can see why the link clicks could cost so much more. Because you might get one link click for every five clicks, right? For every you get, you know, you might get two likes, two comments, and a share, and then a, then a link click, right? So by the time you spend 50 cents, you're going to get a link click versus 10 cents per click or something like that, right? So um, you, know, you have to know the difference between clicks and link clicks, okay? And then uh, let's see. Clicks all will always be more, so you'll always have more, not cost more, you'll always have more clicks all, but how much more depends on the campaign objective. So as I said, you're gonna, you, know, you might get five uh, post reactions and to, to one link click. <clears throat> we don't know that ratio. That ratio depends on the campaign objective. A page post engagement campaign will get a lot more link clicks or excuse me, we'll get a lot more clicks all than it will link clicks because your your objective for your campaign is saying, Facebook, I just want engagement, right? I just want people there that, that are click happy, right? So it's just going for all types of clicks versus a conversion ad. Facebook's not going to optimize for people that are give you, you know, thumbs ups for a conversion ad. They're going to optimize for people who are going to click the link. So the page post engagement campaigns, you're going to get a lot more clicks all than you will for, than you will link clicks versus the conversion ads, you're going to get a, a lot closer ratio typically. You know, you might get a one to one. Sometimes you'll get more link clicks. Well, I guess you can't get more link clicks, but you'll have almost 100% link clicks. You know, that, that it's, you'll, you'll have more, you can have more link clicks than reactions. So sometimes when I say you have more it's uh, reactions, so like, likes, comments, and shares. Um, you know, you could have more link clicks than, you know, you could have 25 link clicks to your website and not one reaction on your post. But you're not going to really get that on a page post engagement because page post engagements, their whole objective is to give you engagement. Okay? So understand the difference between clicks all and link clicks. There's a huge difference, and you got to know the difference. Make sense to you guys? Does that, does that make sense to you guys already? I didn't lose you on that one, did I? Remember, there's a whole glossary page on Facebook ads. Just search Facebook uh, glossary ad terms or just find the link in the comments. And, and you know, there's a whole glossary where you could just study the stuff and learn it. Um, but the best way to learn it is just to apply it, just to, just to jump in and, and, and do it and figure out what it means by, by clicking around. Okay, so next definition after clicks would be the click-through rate. And this is the next important one. <clears throat> remember, there's, you know, what was there, 100 definitions on that page? Um, we're only going to go over two or three of them. I don't remember how many to go over. Um, we're just looking at the most important. And the most important are your clicks and your click-through rate, right? Click-through rate. There's the click-through rate all. And then there's the link click-through rate, just like there's the clicks and the link clicks, right? They each have their own rate. But what does that even mean? Uh, the click-through rate is the percentage of times, and I just stole this right from the Facebook glossary page, uh, the percentage of times people saw your ad and performed a click. So you don't need to know what that percentage is. You don't know, you need to know what those numbers are, are involved in, but it's the percentage of people times people saw your ad and performed a click, right? That simple, right? So there's a click-through rate, all, and there's a click-through rate link, which I'm going to show you in a second. The click-through rate all, I'm going to give you some numbers that you want to be looking for. Now, this is just, um, these are real general numbers. These are going to be your baseline numbers. The numbers I'm going to give you on this webinar, you guys, 
these are all kind of just baseline numbers. These numbers are your, like your starting point. And the numbers that I'm giving you are the numbers that you're typically going to find on campaigns that are um, impulse purchase level campaigns. So the price point, the, the type of product, they're the products that we typically are talking about um, you know, in, in a lot of the trainings. There are times where you can have products that are, you know, maybe you're selling something for um, two hundred dollars, or you're selling. You, know, you can sell more expensive things, and these are not. These are these are less impulsive type purchases, and because of that, these numbers are going to be way different. Um, a lot of numbers are going to be a lot different, and so uh, these numbers that I'm going to be giving you on this webinar that you're going to be looking for are going to be for you know, just the impulse type purchases, and so use it as a as a baseline uh, because it could even fluctuate a little bit based on the product that you're selling or the industry that you're in, the niche that you're in. So click-through rate all, um, the percentage of times, I guess this is click-through rate period, is uh, the percentage of times people saw your ad and performed a click, okay? And then uh, for page post engagement, you want a 4% or above for your click-through rate. 4% is kind of low for a page post engagement. If you get like a three on a page post engagement, you're, you're, uh, you're tip typically your campaign's not gonna work too well. Um, again, I'm just stressing typically and baseline. These are baseline numbers. Um, you know, you could have some campaigns out there. Don't try to call me on this and say, I have a campaign that's getting a, a click-through rate of, of you know, 2.4 on a page post engagement and it's making me money. I, I, that's not my point. My point is, is this is typical. This is a baseline. This is standard and a huge percentage of campaigns. These are the numbers that you want to be paying attention to. Okay, so you want to have above a 4% for page post engagements for your click all, and you want to have above a 2% for your conversion ads. And these are, these are your uh, objectives for your campaigns. And Chris has talked about this in his ads before. He's talked about it. He's talked about it a lot of times. He's talked about you have your page post engagements, which are uh, your, your ads that are or PPE ads. Um, and then you have your ads that are your conversion ads that you're optimizing for conversions, right? Yeah, I know, Bobby. I, I know that right now you said it's confusing, and that's, that's what I, I, I want to stress to you guys that this is just stuff. I want you guys to just remember this information. I'm just lay, layering it on. I, I'm going to layer this information on in a way that hopefully by the end you'll get it, okay? So right now I'm just throwing this information out to you because if you've never been familiar with it, at least now you're familiar with it in the beginning of this webinar. You might not have any clue what I mean still, but you, you at least now you're familiar with the term. Maybe you've never heard click-through rate, and now you hear it. Now you understand it, you, or maybe not, not understand it, but at least you've heard it. Right, and then in a few minutes, I'm going to show you uh, other things about click through rate, and then you'll understand another layer of knowledge on top of uh, on top of you know now you've been introduced, now you understand another layer of it, and then in the end, I'm going to show you guys um, actually how to do some of this stuff or look at it in, inside of an ads manager. So, um, you know, I'm going to layer this this uh, training so that hopefully you can get it get it piece by piece. Right now, just understand these basic principles, and that you could come back to this at any point and learn it. Okay, so. Um, 4% or above is what you want to look for in a click-through rate for a click-through rate all. And for your conversion ads for, um, that was for your PPE, page post engagement, and for your conversion ads, you want above a 2%. And the reason why is, is because page post engagements are going to be optimized. They're naturally, they're optimized. That's what it is. It's page post engagement. Uh, it's optimized to get engagement. So, so Facebook is going to have a higher click. Now those clicks aren't going to be link clicks. They're going to be likes, comments, shares, and other stuff. Versus if you're going for a conversion ad, Facebook's going to be optimizing for link clicks only. So that's only one type of click. It's just going straight to the page. And so you're going to get you know, a, a lower click through rate, um, but it's going to be, typically it's going to be more of the clicks that you want because you're getting link clicks. Okay. So um, you, know, you guys will see what that means in a little bit. Just again, I'm layering this information on for you. So that's click through rate. So we understand the difference between the two different types of clicks the link click and a uh, click all. And now we understand what a, the click through rate for the clicks all is. So now let's look at what the click through rate for the link clicks is and how to understand that a little bit. So the, it's basically the same thing, but for link clicks, it's the percentage of times people saw your ad and performed a link click, right? So instead of a click, they're performing a link click. Makes sense, right? So it's the click through rate um, how many times people are seeing your ad and then clicking? And so <clears throat> you want for uh, for your click-through rate on your link clicks, you want to have above a 
And it doesn't matter if that's a, a PPE ad or a, a conversion ad, it doesn't matter. We're just caring about the amount of clicks that you're getting. So you want it about a 1.5 or above, okay? So again, um, on, your, on your clicks all, we care there was a difference between the types of campaign because one of them was, uh, a, its objective was to get a lot more engagement. Um, but we only care, when we're looking at the link clicks, we only care about the links within this campaign and the links within this campaign. So that's why we have a standard 1.5%. Okay, that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. Um, for some of you, that does it does make sense. And hopefully that helps you out a little bit in understanding why there's only one number here uh, versus two. Okay, but regardless, doesn't matter for your link click to rate, you only, the only thing you care about is that you want a 1.5 or above. Okay, and again, this is baseline, this is standard. Um, if you're making money with lower, good for you. Okay, I just this is a standard. Um, all of this that I'm gonna go over, this is just for you to understand your ads, understand what's going on in your in your campaigns and um, you know how to make them better in the beginning. You know, if you're just getting started and you're just learning and you don't know what to look for, this is the information that you're gonna be looking for. This is the standard baseline information that you're looking for um, and what you need to understand. And then um, you know, add to, you know, once you get into your own niche, start selling your own products and, and really are able to dial in to that to that niche, those numbers might fluctuate from these baselines a little bit, okay? So we went over the difference between the two different types of clicks and the two different types of click-through rates. Um, the definitions or the terms, the definitions of these terms, and then um, kind of some numbers of what we'll be looking for when looking at those numbers. Again, we're actually gonna go do this in a minute. So um, it'll make a little bit more sense. Making sense to you guys? You guys like this? Looks like you guys are, some of you are saying you, you, you get, it's a little confusing, but you're getting it. Some of you will, will get it and the other ones are getting it. You guys will get it. I didn't know any of this stuff. I didn't know any of this stuff at one point. You know, I was talking to a person, um, let's see, just yesterday, asking me about building a website and built, they had this great idea for this website according to them. And, and asking me how you know what they should do, and I said, "Well, build a website. I mean, what else? What, what else can I tell you? Just do it. Build the website, right?" And he's like, "Yeah, well, that's easy because you've been doing it, or you know how to do it." And I was like, "Well, yeah, but I didn't at one time when I started. I didn't know how to do it. I learned to build websites by building websites. I learned to understand this reporting by jumping in there and looking at the reporting. So, um, you know, these webinars, these trainings, they could save you a lot of hassle. They could give you a lot of." Uh, save you a lot of time in understanding what it is that you're supposed to be looking for, which is, you know, my, my intent here. Uh, but you still have to get in and figure it out yourself. That's the best way to learn it. So what are you looking at? Uh, definitions and terms, still the same thing, definitions and terms. But now instead of clicks and link clicks, we're talking about conversions. Okay, so conversions um, can sometimes, when you, when, when you find people like me that are very general with terms sometimes, I can use conversions uh, synonymously with purchase. But conversions can be a lot of different things. Conversions can be the three that we have here, view content, add cart, purchase. It could be initiate checkout. It could be get a lead. It can be visited a page, right? It could be a lot of different things, whatever it is that you're trying to get to convert, to convert, get the convers customer um, to convert on. So, you know, the three that we look at and the three that we care, care about and that we're paying attention to are uh, view content, add to cart, and purchase. Now, I don't know if this is a little bit different than what Chris has talked about. Um, I, you know, if, if uh, he talks about a different method that's, or if he adds in like initiates checkouts or page views or something like that, I, I, um, you know, I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just saying that this is what we do. This is what we see as the essential um, in my campaigns that I run. Uh, so, you know, there's no uh, absolute way to do this. That's why I stress typically and baseline and, and a lot of stuff that I say, because, you know, this is really about knowing what, what are the basics, what, what are the essentials, and then kind of figuring it out from there. So the, what we pay attention to uh, are in, in our conversions, again, are view content, add to carts, and purchase. View content is going to be content on uh, the, the web page. In this case, we're talking about Shopify. We're, we're talking about Shopify stores. So the content is going to be products, right? So you can have page views, which is all the pages on your on your Shopify store, or you can have view content, which is going to be a type of product. So we care about products. We care about view contents. So um, you know the content is the product. 
So you could have a view content conversion, which means that somebody viewed a product, right? Also, you can have an add to cart, add to cart uh, conversion. Add to cart conversion is going to be uh, when they uh, add the product to cart, obviously, and it, it's you have that as your conversion, right? You're, you're marking that. Well, I guess you don't have to mark it, but that's what you're looking at in reporting is the add to cart. So people are adding to cart. You know, so I was looking at somebody's or talking to somebody recently about their um, their ads manager. And for some reason, it says add to basket. And I don't know if it's just a location thing, but I do want to make sure that, um, you know, if it is a location thing, I think they're in Australia. Um, if, uh, if you see add to basket other than add to cart, or if that's what it says on yours, then I guess that's what it means. I, I don't know. Uh, for me, it says add to cart though. And that's what we're looking for. Um, and then there is purchase, purchase conversions. And those are uh, ultimately, that's what you want. You want people to purchase. You want people to buy from you, right? You want people to come to your store and uh, not view content or not only view content and not only add to cart, but to purchase, to make that end purchase, right? You want the money, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't be, sell you wouldn't be having your store, okay? So now here's the thing to understand about these conversions. Everybody that purchases purchased by adding to cart. And everybody that added to cart did that by viewing the content. So there's a flow here, right? There's a flow here. There's a there's a, a flow where people are going to be visiting a web page uh, with your product. When they visit that web page of your product, they're going to be interested in it and they're going to add it to their cart. And then when they add it to their cart, uh, they're going to go to the checkout, initiate checkout, and a few other things, and then they're going to purchase, and then that's ultimately your goal for them to purchase, right? Somebody says, is add to cart conversion equal purchase? No, add to cart is when they press the add to cart button on the product page. So when they have your product page open, they click add to cart, and it takes them to the cart page, that's add to cart. And then purchase is when they actually complete payment and they make it to the, to the, um, to the thank you page. Okay, does that make sense to you guys? View content, add to cart, purchase. For these ones, I, I don't really give you percentages on because, um, well, there isn't percentage on, but I don't, I, I don't give you numbers on these ones so much because this really depends on the product. Um, yeah, somebody says Chris suggests using view content uh, conversions until you get 100 pixel fires before moving on to the next level, then get 100 pixel fires and then move to purchase. Okay, cool. So, so Chris does talk about these same three. Um, so, you know, that's just confirmation that this is what you should be doing if, if we're both talking about the same thing um, without previously talking about it, you know. So here's the thing. Um, that's exactly what you want to be doing when you're making your campaigns is optimizing for view content and then moving to add to carts and then moving to purchase. When, once you you get a certain amount of each one of these. However, you can't know that unless you know how to look at any of this in reporting, right? So it's important to understand the difference between all of these and to know where to look at it at, right? So um, hopefully that's what we go over in this in this webinar. I'm not going to show you I'm not going to show you the flow of how to work your campaigns. That's not what this is about. This is just about understanding the terms, the, the definitions, and then. Um, seeing how to set it up and look at it and what you should be looking for. So conversions, you guys got that? You guys got the difference between between what the conversions are? View content, add to cart and purchase. It sounds like it if Chris has already talked about it. So um, now let's talk a little bit about figuring out numbers. Uh, the margins make the difference in the products. Okay, so if you have products with wider margins, it'll allow you to spend more. And if you have, um, you know, so if you have a product that is a, a necklace, if you have a necklace that you're buying from AliExpress for like, uh, say, $2, and you're selling it on your store, maybe you're doing a free plus shipping on it for $5.99 or something like that. So $6, so, so um, you got $4 margins. You know, you could spend $4 and not get any sale and, you know, or maybe you could spend you could spend three dollars and uh, not not get any sales or get a sale, and that will make you a dollar 
versus if you have a product that is, you know, you're buying for $5 and you're selling it for 10, you got $5 margins. Now you're making $2. So you're making twice as much money um, with the only, the only difference is, is the price of the product. Everything converting the same, the only difference is the price of the product or, or your, excuse me, your margins of the product, right? So, um, you know, the margins is really what matters. If you have wider margins, it'll allow you to spend more, right? If you have a product that you're buying for $100 now and, and you're selling for $200, Right. Well, now you could spend up to like eighty dollars, maybe. I don't know how much you'd want to spend. Probably, I would only want to spend up to like fifty bucks to get a conversion. That way, it would leave me at fifty dollars profit. Um, but you see, you have more more uh, leeway with wider margins, right? So, um, you know, if you get a four dollar conversion on a on a necklace, um, and you could get a four dollar conversion on a hundred dollar item or a two hundred dollar item, you're gonna make a lot more money on the more expensive item, but it doesn't always work out that the conversions are gonna be the same. So uh, what I like to look for, this is what I like to look for, this is my rule, is that I typically will stop my ads after spending two times my profit margins and not getting any sales. So I don't look for, am I getting a $3 conversion or am I getting a $10 conversion or am I getting a $15 conversion? I'm looking at, when I'm looking at, um, Purchases. I'm talking about purchases right now. Um, I'm looking at uh, spending two times my profit margin. And if I don't have any sales, if I have no purchases, so I'm talking about my conversions, purchase conversions. If I have no purchase conversions after two times my profit margins, then I'm going to pretty much stop my ad. Okay. So if I'm buying a product for $5 and I'm selling it for $10, my profit margin is $5. So two times my profit margin would be $10. So if I spend $10 and don't get any sales, I'm turning off my campaign, right? Now, what you might have already asked is, well, why would you spend two times your profit margin? If you're only making $5, why would you even spend $10? Well, because I, I wanna allow my, myself time to test, right? I wanna do some testing. Sometimes you don't just have a hit right from the very beginning. Right, right. Sometimes you don't just get conversions at two dollars, you know, right away, and they just keep rolling in. Sometimes you got to tweak some things and 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 uh, you know finesse them a little bit. However, if you spend two times your profit margin and you're not getting any sales, okay, there's there's something wrong with that particular ad set, right? You might want to check out check out some of your other ad sets or other campaigns or move on to a new product. Um, but if you're spending two times your profit margins, you typically can't fix that. Okay. So you're just gonna be wasting money. Now, if you're getting sales, then that's a different story. We're just talking about when to turn off your ads at this point. Okay, so uh, why, the wider the margins, the, the uh, more you could spend, but the margins ultimately make the difference on um, what your view contents, add to cards and purchases should be costing you. I don't really pay attention to uh, the, the cost of these two too much. Uh, but I will show you guys uh, some numbers on them. What I typically pay attention to is my link costs, or excuse me, my, my click costs and my purchase costs. Um, but I, I'm going to show you guys some, uh, all of my things just so you could understand a little bit. Remember, I just want you to understand the first layer of this stuff right now. We're going to go ahead and look at it in, in recording in a minute. If you guys, some of you guys weren't here from the very beginning. So I'm just giving you these definitions and, and these terms and get, kind of giving you some things to look at. Uh, to understand, and then we're going to actually go into recording and figure it out and actually see it. Okay, so um, with conversions, with, with, with clicks, we can have some hard numbers. With conversions, it's more about two times your profit margins because your profit margins really determines how much you could spend. Okay, <clears throat> so step one this is how you're going to go through your campaigns. Um, this is when you're looking at your reporting and you're looking at your ads, you're going to kind of have this flow to all of your campaigns. You're going to do this every single time. This is what I, I do every single time. Um, so, uh, you know, it, this is definitely repeatable. Somebody asked, Michelle asked, when you say you shut off your ad at two times the profit margin, is that after the ad is optimized by three or four days? Um, no, this that is allowing for the optimization for three or four days. So if I'm selling a product for, uh, you know, if I have a $5 profit margin, um, I might run that ad for, well, I guess two days or something like that. You should you should be getting sales for within a couple days. You should you should be able to get a sale. Um, if you if you have the money to run it, 
you know, three, four, five, six days and hope for a sell, you know, go ahead. You know, the more data you have, then the more information you have to make decisions. Uh, I just prefer not to because I've never had to do that. I've never had to spend a lot of money. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You could just run it a couple of days. And if you spent two times your profit margin, typically you can't fix it. Okay, there, there's almost no way to fix it. So if you got a five dollar a day ad set for a product that you have a five dollar margin on, then after two days you should be able to turn it off. So you shouldn't be going three or four or five days. So I hope that helps, Michelle. Um, either way, th this is the baseline. You're going to have to to make that decision for your own uh, business. If you're getting sales, you know, tweak it a little bit more. Okay, but let's let's go back to this flow. So this is step one. Um, I want to run through these these steps of how I look at my campaigns. I just started my ad now. Now I have a product on my store. Uh, yesterday we talked about how you know how to build your store uh, information or or build up the information about your product, how to learn about your product and, and um, you know market a little bit more. So now imagine we've done that. Imagine that that we've got some uh, some ads up and we've put some uh, content on our store. And now we just want to run some more ads and figure out more about um, you know what what numbers mean what and you know what should I be doing with this campaign okay well step one is gonna be you're gonna watch for your cost per click you're gonna watch your cost per click and your click through rate remember we talked up here about your different types of clicks right we have link clicks and clicks all right well those those numbers you know how many clicks you have and how many link clicks you have those numbers are, uh, they also have um, uh, costs associated with them. When you look in your reporting, you're gonna say, you're gonna see you have, you know, maybe five clicks and those clicks cost you 10 cents a piece, right? You spent 50 cents and, and uh, you got five clicks and they cost you 10 cents a piece, right? So you have a cost associated with your click. Well, for clicks all, you want, between a uh, typically standard now you could do way better than this you could you could sometimes get well you can't get way better than that really actually um, it's hard to get below a penny for a click um, but uh, I have seen it done so uh, penny clicks or um, you know 15 cent clicks is typically what you'll find for a, a successful campaign a sex, successful e-commerce campaign you're typically going to find between a penny and 15 cents is what your clicks are gonna cost. So that's what you're looking for. If your clicks are costing you a dollar, turn that campaign off, okay? If your clicks are costing you a dollar, I don't let my campaigns run longer than a day. I honestly, I don't even go by my two times a profit margin rule. If it's costing me, if, if I spent $2 to get two clicks, I'm turning off that campaign. I'm like, this is a waste. I wasted my time, I'm mad at myself for wasting the time on making the ad, right? Like it, my, I'm stressing that to you guys. You need to have lower numbers, okay? Your click shouldn't be costing you a dollar, right? Unless you got some crazy high conversion rate on your store. But if you're that good at getting some crazy high conversion rate on your store, then you should be better at getting better clicks, right? Okay, so these clicks, they, your, your clicks all should be somewhere between a, a penny and 15 cents, something like that. Can be a little bit more, can be more, can be 30 cents for clicks all. Remember, these are not click, link clicks. You have to know the difference. It can be more. Can't have a successful campaign with more, but this is kind of what you want to go for. Okay, you know, make some of you guys feel a little bit better. Let's go to 20 cents. Okay. Link clicks, you typically want between 8 cents and 30 cents. I'll go up to 40 cents on this one for you guys, make you guys feel good. Okay. Again, these are baseline numbers. And I, I by changing those numbers so quickly like that live on this webinar, you guys, that, that lets you know these are baseline numbers. Just giving you something to start off with, just, just so that you understand you should not be paying $3 for a link click, okay? Now, I'm guilty of it. I've done it. I don't even know. The ads manager I'm going to show you, it's a demo account, so I don't know what's in there, but we might find some that are that high, right? I, I don't remember what I run in that account. Um, but you do want to stop your campaigns. If you're, if you're not getting somewhere close to this, you want to turn off your campaigns, okay? You don't want to be spending too much money. So you're going to watch your cost per click. I don't know why I have click rate on there. Um, you know, clean it up just in case I give you guys these slides. So step one is to watch your cost per clicks. Make sure they're in the range that you want that should be uh, making, you, making you some money, right? If you're spending a dollar a click and your conversion rate on your stores is 
is like a 2%. That means you need to have, uh, you need to have 50 people on your store to get a conversion. So if you're paying a dollar click, link click and it takes 50 people to get to your store to get a conversion, that means that you're spending $50 to get a conversion. Right? That's insane. You don't want dollar click. That's why the 40 cent clicks, like that's even crazy, right? Unless you got a really good conversion rate. So these are these are kind of uh, baseline. That's where you want to start. You definitely don't want to go too much higher than that. Uh, you're doing good if you go lower. <clears throat> Make sense, you guys? Step one, make sure you got some good clicks, right? Okay, step two is to now start watching your add to carts. Now, I gave you this number here. I told you guys um, when I was going over the outline just a few, few slides ago that I don't typically look at my add to carts. Um, sometimes I do, but I'm not hard about them. But I, want, I just wanted to show you this um, because you know I wanted in the in the price range of products that that uh, myself and others, uh, Chris and, and um, everybody's been doing these webinars. We have these price range of products that's like under a forty dollar item that you're going for this impulse purchase on. And with that typical product, this is kind of that number that that um, you're looking for, the number you're looking for. But there's a huge range, you know, thirty cents to three dollars. There's a big difference between the two. Um, in, when, you're, when you're looking at an action. And so, uh, you know, for a free plus shipping offer, you might see something like 30 cents per add to cart, right? And then every five add to carts might get a purchase, so $1.50 per purchase on a free plus shipping offer, something like that, right? Versus something where you're selling an item that costs you $15, you're buying it for uh, $30, and, um, you know, every uh, three add to carts is a conversion. So, you know, it'd be three dollars an add to cart, which means you get nine dollars a conversion, which means you're making six dollars profit, right? The numbers work. Um, you know, it just really depends on what type of product you're selling, the margins of your product. That's why I said back here, um, what I pay attention to is the is is the clicks and then the profit, or spent the profit spend or the spend of the profit. I guess I don't know what I'd call that. Spending two times. Oops, jumped ahead. Um, so step one, step two, um, step one was to look at your clicks, your click costs, make sure you're not spending too much there. Um, once you start getting some add to carts, right? So following Chris's method of, um, you know, doing the same thing where you're paying attention to getting, uh, first you get a bunch of new contents, then you get a bunch of add to carts and switch your, switch your, um, the conversions that you're going for. Um, well, while you're doing that process, you're paying attention to your clicks in the very beginning. And then you're also... Um, then you're gonna start paying attention to your add to carts, your add to cart cost once you start getting add to carts, right? And then once you start getting purchases and convert conversions, you're gonna start wanting to pay attention to this. You want to make sure that you're uh, within two times your profit margins um, in, in your conversions on your purchase conversions. Okay, is that making sense to you guys? Make sense, to you guys? Yeah. See, somebody said that, that they got a, a cost. Of conversion, it looks like you said you got it down to three dollars and thirty-four cents. Um, Thirty-eight dollar purchase, and now down to you have a high profit margin, and, and you're, you have conversions at three dollars and thirty-four cents. Yep, that's great. That's one of the cool things about Facebook and and traffic. It's one of the interesting things about traffic, is is that getting somebody to buy a hundred dollar item and getting somebody to buy a three dollar item, you know, depending on your targeting and how specific your targeting is. You could really like make a lot of money from the higher end items. You just got to be a lot better at the marketing because um, you know you're not really going for impulse purchases. Um, but again, for items under forty dollars, you know you're, these are the numbers you're going to typically find. For items over forty dollars, it's going to cost. Um, it might start costing you a lot more or a little bit more, anyways. Okay. So step one is to watch your cost per clicks. Step two, well, I guess, um, you know, I had the click the rate in there. I'm going to put it back in there. And CTR, because we talked about the CTR back here, right? So um, you're, you're going to watch your cost per clicks, but you're also going to make sure that your click through rates are within the, the uh, boundaries of these. You know, if it's a page post engagement, you want above a 4%. If it's a, a conversion campaign, then you want above a 2%, right? So you're going to pay attention to those. Uh, that's step one. Um, and then pay attention to your cost. And then step two, you're going to pay attention to your add to cart to make sure they're not, they're not costing you too much, right? And then um, step three, you're going to make sure that you're not spending two times your profit margin, right? 
right? Then you, you want like you want a quarter of your profit margin, right? If you're if you're if your uh, your margin is ten dollars, right? You're buying the product for ten, you're selling it for twenty, so now you got ten dollars uh, profit that you can make. Um, you, you want a conversion like two dollars, you know? You want a conversion of fifty cents if you can, right? That'll give you nine dollars and fifty cents profit, right? You're, it's awesome, right? If you can, but you know you typically can't do that. Okay, so the better the, the um you know the the better the more money you make the better. However, um, we're talking about testing and just getting things figured out in the beginning. You don't want to spend more than your profit margin. Okay, so so far what we've talked about uh, is the different types of clicks, the different types of click through rates, um, the steps in looking at your ads, starting with clicks, or uh, yeah, the starting with clicks, um, add to carts and um, purchases. Oh, we also looked at conversions. Uh, the different types of conversions. Um, now let's look at um, some of the things, some more things that you're looking for um, in your in your reporting. So you notice the difference on this one. This one says, what are you looking for? What you are looking for? Figuring out the numbers. That's what we're looking at before. We're, we're trying to figure out some numbers. But now you can figure out like, who's your audience. You can figure out like, should should I? Uh, you know, are my conversions costing me ten dollars because Facebook's showing it to the wrong people? Yeah, and you'd be like, well, what do you mean showing it's wrong people? I'm targeting people. Well, no, there's some stuff in there that uh, you really might not know without looking at some of the breakdown within reporting. So there's uh, a tab that we're going to look at when we go into our reporting that allows you to look at the um, the the different breakdowns. There's a lot of information that you can look at, but the ones that we care about, there's I guess six of them that I have here that we care about. There's age, gender, platform, device, country, and region. Now you might not look at all of these, but depending on my type of campaign and what I'm doing, I'm going to look at at least some of these. Okay, so if I'm going after uh, all males, I don't really care about gender because, well, I already know that my ads are being shown to all males, right? Or if I'm just targeting iPhone, I don't need to look at uh, device. Right? Or if I'm just targeting the United States, I don't need to look at country. However, um, if I'm going after male and female and I don't know which one's buying from me, well, I'm going to want to look at the gender. Right? Or if, I'm, uh, if I have my age range from 18 to 65 and older and I don't know who's buying for me, well, I want to pay attention to the age range. Right? Same thing with platform, device, country, region. And um, I, I think these are the only ones that I look at. Might see more when we get, actually get in there. Okay, guys, make sense? As I said, this is this is more of the, the technical uh, stuff. It's it's um I, I, these are the essentials. So it's essentials that if you want to be successful at this, you have to be able to know some of these numbers. You have to be able to know some of this. You have to know this information. You will know this. Um, you're like there's no way out of it. You will know this stuff, right? You cannot if you want to do this e-commerce stuff. You will know this. You will know this stuff. Okay. So um, let's go, okay, next slide. To be aware of one thing before we start looking at some of this stuff, um, we need to be aware that, um, oh, well, actually that's why I have this right here, the breakdown, that's why we look at the breakdown is, is because Facebook could only be showing to a certain segment within our overall audience. So if I am, if I am targeting ages 18 to 65 and my conversion cost is coming in at like, uh, I don't know, well, let's say click cost. My click costs are coming in, my link clicks are costing me 20 cents. When I'm looking at my reporting, my link clicks are costing me 20 cents. I'm going, going for ages, I'm targeting ages 18 to 65, my link clicks are costing me 20 cents. Right? Now, what I want to know is, because based on up here, that's that's uh, you know somewhere in the middle, I guess. I raise it a little bit for you guys. What I want to know is is should I or uh, who within that age range, that 18 to 65, is giving me the best clicks so that I can get it closer to the eight cents, right? And so what I'm going to use is the breakdown and reporting to find out that you know maybe Facebook. Is showing uh, has show has spent out of my five dollars a day maybe it spent four dollars showing it to the ages uh, thirty five to forty four, right? But there's some really good clicks between ages twenty five to thirty four or something like that, right? 
those of you guys that, that, that have been you know looking at your reporting know what I'm talking about. And the only way to understand who to go after or who is your audience, is it the 18 to, to 25? Um, or is it the the sixty the sixty five and above, or is it someone in the middle? You, the only way to really know is to go into your breakdown and look at the ages. And so um, we're going to look at that here in a little bit, okay? But the, what you need to be aware of is that Facebook will only show to a certain segment because you're telling Facebook to optimize, right? You're telling Facebook. Um, you know, I'm going to, I want to target 18 to 65 and older, but Facebook, you're optimizing this and you're going to get me the best conversions or the best clicks or the best add to cart. You're going to get me the best cost. So Facebook, um, you know, you do your thing. And Facebook does its thing and Facebook is only showing it to people with ages 35 to 45. And, and so you're like, okay, my cost is 20 cents per click. But we didn't, what you didn't realize it's only that price for that age range because that's where Facebook's been spending your money. Right. So if that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. I don't care if that makes sense to you guys right now. Um, I just want it to be in your head because that's one of those things that when you're actually doing it, you're gonna be like, aha, that's what he was talking about. Makes sense now. Right. So if it doesn't make sense, great. Um, don't worry about it. If it does make sense, even greater, it's because uh, you've already been digging around and know what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're going to actually make some reports here uh, for the, a little bit longer, um, and we're going to make four different types of reports. And it's really easy. It's just clicking. Don't got to even do anything. Maybe typing a few few characters to set these reports up. Um, and there's four different reports that I set up uh, based on what I want to see, the information that I want to see. I have primary, which is going to be my report, which is going to include all of these, my, my link information, my add the card information, my purchase information, and a little bit more information. That's my primary. That's the one I'm looking at all of the time. Then I have one that's quick. It gives me a quick look at my link click information. And then I have one that gives me a quick look at my add to cart information. And I have a report that gives me a quick look at my purchase information. The reason why I like uh, th these ones separate rather than just going to my primary when you, when you see me do, when you see us set this up or see me set this up, you're going to be like, well, why can't you just look at all of them in primary? Um, because I could look at these ones easily on my mobile device, on my iPhone, by setting them up separately. Okay, so those of you guys, those of you guys who ever tried to look at your reporting on your on your phone, just go to your browser and go to go to your ads manager and look at the desktop version of the ads manager, um, and you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll uh, have you'll be able, better be able to see your reporting by making them a little bit smaller and combined like this. You'll see what I'm saying. Okay, I recommend using your phone to look at your reporting. I do all the time. I always have tabs open on my phone for reporting. I always have like, I mean, if you looked at my iPhone at any given time and you open up my browser, I might have like six tabs open of different ads managers and, and different reporting uh, tabs open. So, um, you know, that's what I would recommend you do. If you, if you plan on running an internet business that uses advertising, Facebook advertising, then I, I, I would, I recommend that you have some tabs open and are always looking at your reporting. Okay, so I'm showing you the four types of reports that I set up, and um, let's just go ahead and get those set up now. I guess. Is that follow? You guys following along? I know you. I know some of you were were kind of confused on this. Um, you know, this that was to be expected. It, it is to be expected. Um, I hope that. You know, after watching this video once or twice, you'll for a second because it just told me that I was disconnected. Okay, you're still there? Okay, great. Either you're saying yes, it makes sense, or yes, you're still connected. Either way, it should be good. It's recorded. So, um, before we look at the reporting real quick, I just want to just a re real quick recap of what we looked at and what we're going to be looking at next. So we looked at the different definitions of what we should be, uh, what's most important. We talked about the two different types of clicks. We care about um, the, the clicks all, which includes link clicks, but also reactions and, and other clicks. Um, and then there's link clicks, which is just link clicks, right? Okay, so uh, we have both of those that we, we define. You guys should understand the difference between those now. Um, and then we talked about the different click-through rates and the different percentages that you should be looking for on your click-through rates based on the campaign objective that you have. And then we uh, talked about 
uh, conversions, what the different types of conversions are, and then the flow of your ad process of uh, you know optimizing for content, carts, and then purchase. But while you're doing that, you're looking at the reporting metrics for each one of these uh, at the same time, and you're looking at the spends uh, for clicks, and you're looking at uh, the spend for add to carts, and you're looking at two times the profit margins for your uh, purchases when you're looking at your campaigns. And then um, we talked about the different breakdown that you're going to want to look look over. Um, you're going to want to look at these six different uh, topics or um, I guess segments or I don't know what they'd be, breakdown options. You want to look at those and maybe some more based on whatever business you have. You'll, you'll see them in there when you uh, get in there yourself. Um, you want to be aware that when, what you're looking for when you're looking at the breakdown is is um, are, are there any places that Facebook may be, may be showing your ads that may be skewing your metrics or are, are there any places where you should be focusing your ads that can improve your uh, results, okay? Um, so you, you want to be aware of, of uh, that optimization there. Um, I don't want to call it like a glitch, but it's just, a, it's a, it's a um, I guess a side effect of, op of letting Facebook optimize is that your, your segments uh, Facebook might only show the certain segments. Okay, so let's start these reports. Let me bring over this ads manager. Uh, somebody said, can we save this video? These videos are saved. Um, if you go to the top of the group, anytime you go to the top of the group uh, here in the 90 Day Challenge group, you should see the pinned post that, um, let me pull this over here. Okay, You should see the pinned post that has all of the uh, past um, daily live webinars. So we're on day 42. So there should be, um, actually the last I looked at, it was only up to day 40. So yesterday's and today should be put up there pretty soon. So um, you'll always have access to this if you have it right, if you're watching it right now and you're afraid you're going to forget it all. Well, it's always going to be there. So uh, I guess don't worry. So I have this ads account open and I went to the lifetime of it and there really isn't much information here. Uh, I guess I only ran a few campaigns on this one, but I guess it's enough to give us a look at um, what it is we're looking for and then setting up some reports. So the reports section that I'm talking about, there's a few different ways you could set up reports in Facebook in, in the ads managers or ads manager. Um, you could do saved reports up here, save a new report. Um, I don't do that. And the reason why is, is I just like things to be simple for me. And, um, you know, I come to the, my, my normal ads manager. I could, that means I could just come to my ads manager and I click the columns, the column layouts that I have, right? I'll, I'll just pick the different one. Okay, I want, now I want to look at performance. Or I just want to look at my video engagement. Or I just want to look at my carousel ad engagement, right? So this is what I use is my columns. I keep the same dashboard report and I switch my columns and I edit my columns. So on the slides over here, uh, four helpful reports that we're going to make. We're going to make primary links, add to carts, and purchase. We're going to make four different, four different um, reports. What I'm referring to is the is the um, column column layouts. Okay. When I was talking about the breakdown, the age, gender, platform, device, country, and region. When I'm talking about this stuff. I am referring to this right here. Okay, so we have age, gender. You can look at some a mixture of them, and there's even more stuff you could look at. You could look at actions, time, different things. Um, I don't really pay attention to that until you're like really until you're really scaling. Then you could look at okay, well now my conversions are all happening in the morning. Let me just focus my my money on in the morning. Right, or all my conversions are coming in the evening. Let me just focus on the evening. Right, you care about that type of stuff later on, um, but in the beginning, you just care about basic information: who's converting, who, like, how can you make it just, how can you just get some profitable sales? Right, okay. So um, delivery is what we care about in the breakdown section. That's everything that I have on the list is in the delivery section. So uh, if you didn't know what I was talking about in the slides back here, if you didn't know, you know, where, where, what are you talking about? Hey, where do I even see this? Okay, well that's where you see it. You see it in the breakdown. Okay, and then all of the other numbers, the clicks and and um, click through rates and costs and all of that. That's what these columns are. 
And that's what we're going to set up in here for the ability to see those columns and to see the numbers that we care about that are associated with those columns. Okay? Make sense? Yep, watch me build, Bobby. I don't know if uh, you were part of that program. Um, it was a while back. Okay, so let's see. Actually, I wasn't re refreshed the wrong page. I wanted to refresh the comments page. I have another window open over here. I'm watching the comments, making sure everything's good. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, let's see. The first one I had was primary. Let's go ahead and set that one up. I want to make sure I have, yeah, primary links add to cards and purchase. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. The way you do it is you come over here and you click customize columns. And it brings up this window that allows you to uh, check all of the columns that you want. You may just find, find the item that you want and then you just check it, uncheck the ones you don't want. Or you could just X out the ones you don't want over here on the right. Or you could also drag them around to the right order that you want. Okay, make sense? So what I do just to get started, we'll just X everything out of here. Get rid of all of them. And that way I could show you how to get started. So the first one we're gonna do is primary. First one we're gonna have is primary. And so what we want for primary is we're going to want all of the, uh, all the information that's in all of the other tabs. And so what I like is, um, well, there's a few that I like up front. I like delivery and I like reach right up front. And I also like results. So depending on what you're, if you're going for uh, page post engagement, your results will be your page post engagements. If you're going for purchases, your results will be your purchases, right? So I like those to be right up front. Um, Campaign name could stay up there. And I like delivery so that I could see what ads are on. I like reach so I could see how many people are actually seeing the ads. And then I have results, which tell me a quick look at whatever the results I'm looking, uh, that, that I'm objective or that I have my objective as, uh, gives me those results. So those are the three I like to have up front. And then the other one, oh, spent is the other one, the fourth one, amount spent. Okay. And I just do the amount spent one because that way I could look at when I when I change my date range over here, I can I could have lifetime and it'll tell me how much I spent in a lifetime and I can change it today and I can know how much I spent in a day, right? So I just do the total amount spent. You could also add in amount spent today. Um, that way, if you do a lifetime, you could also see how much you spent today. I've, I've never had to compare them, so I don't. So I got delivery, reach, amount spent, and results. And then I like to do my let's see clicks. So actually, yeah, clicks. So clicks all is the first is the one that I like next. And then I like to do my CTR for my clicks all. My click through rate for my clicks all. And then I like to do my CPC, which is my cost per click for clicks all. And I'll have those right up front. So I got my clicks, my click through rate and then my cost per click. Okay, and then I do the same thing for add to cart. Okay, so I get my website add to carts, my cost per add to cart. Now you can't do the convert the cart rate, but you can do the cart value. So that's the one I do for cart. So add to cart conversion value. So now we know how much money they're adding to cart, right? If they add, if we have a product that's $17.99 and they add three, if they add them to cart three times, we'll add up that $17.99 three times and you'll see the value, right? The overall value. So um, clicks, then you do add to carts next, cost per add to carts, and then add to cart value. Then we're gonna do the same thing for purchase. Website purchase, cost per website purchase, and website purchase value. Again, reorganize them. Let's see, um, where's my purchase ads at the end? Website purchases, cost per website purchase, and website purchase value. 
Okay. And that is, let's see, am I forgetting anything? I'm doing this off the head. Um, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. I don't care about my CPM. I don't care about uh, my relevant score. I don't care, care about um, impressions. I'm caring about reach. Yeah, I think that's it. So I'll save that one as my primary. So you hit down here, save as preset, and I'll call that my primary. Right, so now you save it and click apply. Now somebody asked if you sit do it once, is it default? You can click right here and set as default. Right, did you guys see that? So you click right there after you set it and you have it checked, then you set it as default. Okay, so yeah, once you do it, it's set as default. Now, uh, that's my primary. Now I see all the information that I wanna see. I, I have you know everything that I need here. Um, really, really good. Um, so now what, what I do is I make the smaller ones. I make my link click report or column setup and my add to cart one and my purchase one. And now the, now the reason why I do that, as I said earlier, I do this for, for mobile reasons so I can look at it on mobile. And when you're looking at it on mobile, everything over here from about right here, from results on over to the right, won't be visible or somewhere around here, somewhere within, within the first four columns, it won't be visible. And you can't scroll right on it. And so you only get to see the first few columns. And so, like I said, I like to set up the information so I could see quickly uh, that information right here in the first few columns when I'm on mobile. That way I could see it. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Either way, um, you know, you could, you could set them up either. If you're not using mobile reporting, then you don't need the other three, um, but you can set them up anyways. It doesn't really matter. Right. It doesn't matter because you have all the primary. If you're on desktop all the time, then you have everything right here. Right. It's all, all the same. Okay. Um, but it might help for like comparing days because in here you can compare a few different days and stuff like that. So, um, you know, totally up to you. Again, this is just kind of like a baseline training. This is what I think we should be having at least have this primary one. Um, so what I do is I will go to, um, so customize columns. Now I have my primary one. So now let me make my, um, my link one. So what I do is I'll go down here and just get rid of some of these other ones all these other ones at the end. And I just leave this just like this, but I'll actually move these ones down to the end. Keep the information, but move it to the end. And then I'll call this my links. No, actually this is click. Oh, you know what I forgot you guys? I did forget something on the, on the primary one. I'll come back to it. Um, I, I totally messed up. Um, let me cancel this and back up real quick. So on the primary one, I totally forgot. I have my clicks on here, but I don't have my link clicks on here. See, I went from clicks to website to add to carts. So we need our link clicks in here. Sorry about that. So link clicks and then uh, click through rate for link click. And then we want cost per link click. Okay, and we're gonna put that between clicks and website. So link clicks, cost per link click, and click through it. All right. Now set as save as default or save as save as preset and then primary and then apply. Are you sure you want to replace this? Yes. Okay. So now I have the information I need. Okay. So now let's go back in there and do do this one. Customize columns and now let's set up our links. Remember, we had the primary, we had the link click, we had the add the cart, and we had the purchase. Okay, and then now I'll call this one links. I was starting to do a clicks one a little bit ago. We're doing links. So uh, link clicks, cost per link click, click through rate for links, and then the other delivery amount spent and reach cool. So apply, got that one saved. Do the same thing for add to carts, right? The same information that we had a minute ago uh, for add to carts, you just add them back in. Just those three, right? And then rearrange them. Pretty easy stuff. 
right? I mean, it's all drag and drop. You don't even have to know what you're doing right here. Just call it, just follow me, follow, follow the video, right? It's not our cards, add the cards. Add the cards, apply, right? Yep. And then the next one would be purchase. And then now I have my four primary ports and um, I had an extra one already there. We have to get rid of that one. So those are the four that you need. Primary, which you can make your default by clicking set as default. And then you want your links, your add to carts and your purchases. Because that gives you the information that you need according to, the, according to this, the slides that we just went over. That's the information you need. Right? You want to pay attention to step one, you want to pay attention to your, your uh, clicks, right? And then on step two, you want to pay attention to your add to cards. And then on step three, you want to pay attention to your, your sales. Okay? So now we got those set up. Let's just spend a few minutes now actually looking at reporting. Now, I'm not going to give you somebody else if I could give, uh, go, go through um, to show how to get to your creative from here. Um, you just go to your ads and click on the checkbox and then hit preview right here. That's how you get to your creative. Okay, but I'm not going to go. I'm not going to answer those, those questions right now. Um, we just want to stick to reporting. We're not going to stick to the overall dashboard, how to move around ads manager. Um, we're just going to stick to the reporting. And that's what you need to know is those three or those four um, column setups and then breakdown. And that's really what you're going to mess with. You could also use... Uh, the, the search and the filters when you're looking at your reporting and you could also use your um, your date ranges up here when you're looking at reporting. So I like to, uh, so you could, the, the two that I look at or that I use in the filters are I'll either check it and I'll click filter by selection. So maybe I'll, I'll check like five different campaigns and I'll click filter by selection or I'll not have them checked and I'll just want to look at the ones that are active and I'll go by delivery and I'll look at active, just look at my active campaign. If I have a product, say I want to look at, um, let's see right here, we have this can this caffeine campaigns. They had a bunch of campaigns. They had hundreds of campaigns in here. And I just want to look at the caffeine ones. Then I would use the search and I would search for just the campaign or the word caffeine to show me all the, the campaigns that I want. And then I could use my reporting uh, tabs right here to figure out the metrics and uh, you know, figure out if my campaigns are good or not. Okay, so let's go to primary because that gives us all the information that we need. And then I kind of want to pull a, this slide up and kind of go over some of the stuff that we're looking for. So remember, we're looking at, we want to look at, um, well, actually, let's go all the way back to the beginning. Let's look at the differences between clicks, link clicks, and clicks, right? So right here we have a... Um, this is a shirt that our clicks all, the click to rate is 5.58%. The click to rate for the, uh, for the, for the links is not even a whole percent. It's 0.28%, right? It's way down there. Now notice that this is a page post engagement ad, right? Now you still want higher clicks. Uh, however, um, you will notice sometimes you could go a lot lower on page post engagement, but the most important thing is, is look at the big difference here. Page post engagement is going to be optimizing for engagement, right? Rather than link clicks. That's important. Versus, let's see if we have, that's an album, so that's page post engagement. Do I have any? Do I really not have any purchase ads in this one? Okay, this one's add to cart. This is a conversion ad, and this is a link ad. So when you go to, remember, you go to your, uh, I should have it here, results. If you look at your results, it'll tell you what your campaign is. So this one says, these are all page post engagements, and then this is add to cart, link clicks, and page post engagements. Okay, so notice this one. So, so this one has a 2.81%. It's the conversion ad, 
right, to add to cart. It has a 2.81 for all click-through rate, but it has a 1.49 for the click-through rate link. Notice how close they are together versus 0.28 compared to 5.58, right? This one is a page post engagement as well. Look at this, uh, 5.3 compared to 0.2. This one is a, um, well, it's page post engagement says it here. So it's got nine versus 0.19. This is a add to cart, so it's a conversion. It's 0.2 versus 1.49, right? Big difference. You're gonna get way more um, interactions and clicks than you are uh, link clicks, especially if you're going for page post engagement. And that's important to know when you're looking at your metrics. You might be like, oh, heck yeah, I'm getting a 5.58 click through rate, right? Well, yeah, but look at your link click through rate, right? Is, what, that's, like that could be garbage, right? There's no way of knowing without knowing this campaign. Um, I don't remember this campaign, but obviously I turned it off and didn't make any money from it. Um, I don't think I, it says no sales after $120 spent. So that, like that, that's garbage, right? Even though I had a really good click-through rate, it's above a four for, on a page post engagement, um, click, click all, which is exactly what I said over here. Remember I said back here, uh, for a page post engagement, you typically want a, uh, for your click-through rate all, you typically want it above a four. And that's what we have for our page post engagements, which are these ones right here. And then this bottom one, we have a five, a five, a nine, and uh, nothing. This one must not have ran, um, but they're all above a four. Whereas the link clicks, um, let's go back to this, or the conversion ads, I mean, the add to cart, we only have one of them. I said to have it above a two and see this one's 2.8. So it's still right above it, right? So that's for your clicks all. And then for the uh, link clicks, you want to typically have it at a 1.5 or above. Now, these ones are extremely low, and I guess I was getting some add to carts on these ones. These ones are expensive, uh, $17 conversions on this one, um, but this, none of these campaigns were very profitable, were profitable for me. Um, my link clicks were too low. People were liking this stuff. They were engaging with it, but they weren't really buying it, okay? So um, like even on this one down here, that is an add to cart conversion objective campaign, right? It has a... Uh, cost per click of a link click of a dollar. Remember I said dollar is too much, right? It barely has the 1.49. I said it needs a 1.5, right? We need a 1.5 or better, and it didn't, it didn't have it at a 1.49. So according to uh, what we went over in these slides, these campaigns aren't really that good. They do have numbers that are better than what we said as far as the click-through rate, on the uh, engagement side of things, but on the click side, the link click side, they're pretty low. We want we want higher. This one down here, uh, the link click ad, it actually had a higher link click rate than the one above it. Um, probably two different campaigns. I'm not even sure what they are. Um, but the cost was higher, right? So that's what I mean, guys. Like these are baseline numbers. You just want to look at them and see if your numbers are close to, to what we talked about in, in these. You want them at least that or better, right? So 1.5, you could see that a 1.49 wasn't isn't going to cut it on this one, right? So let's look at the ones that we actually have conversions on. This one was a uh, $17 conversion, has $17 conversions, and this one had has $37 conversions. Let's just go ahead and check those real quick and see what we could discover about those. So remember, you check the ones that you want, you could filter and hit filter by selected. And uh, now let's look at some of the, um, some of the breakdown, right? Remember we talked about the breakdown. The breakdown over here is age, gender, platform, device, country, region. Right now, we, we, these ones we're getting, we're getting conversions on, right? According to our according to our slides, we were supposed to look at the the link clicks and the cost per clicks, and they weren't all that great. And so we wanted to look at add to cart, but we weren't really getting add to carts. And so we just looked at some of them that had conversions. Um, let's just look at the ones that have conversions and see. You know, I don't know what the products were. I know we didn't have two times. I know we didn't make this rule. I know we didn't we didn't we weren't making sales within two times the profit margin um, because it was a cheap necklace, I think, or whatever it was. It was really really cheap. Um, but, but that's what we're doing. So let's let's go to it. Uh, $17 a conversion for one of them and 37 for the other one. So I, I don't think that um, I'm getting these. Let's see, if it was two times the profit margin, that means it'd be like eight bucks, uh, something like that. Uh, it would be your profit margin. 
and this is a necklace and our profit margin was like three bucks on it or something like that so it was way over than what, what we should be spending same thing for this one i don't remember what it was but it was way over what we should be spending two dollars two conversions at 37 dollars conversion um what you want to do now is find out okay we're, we're getting conversions but is there something there is there is there information here are, are people buying that I should be focusing more on? And that's where I look at my, my breakdown. Now, for these ones, I might have been going after uh, certain age ranges. Um, looks like 18 to 65 and older for this campaign and 18 to 60, 18 to 44, no, 18 to 65 and more on this campaign as well. Um, so let's look at where the conversions are coming at. Look at this. Right here, this is a good information to know. This is, this is, a, this is a perfect example of why you look at this, am I understanding it right? It looks like I'm understanding it right. Yeah, so this is a perfect example of why you want to be paying attention to your campaigns. Look, right here, ages 18 to 24, it cost 20, $22 to get a conversion. Whereas down here, ages 35 to 44, it cost $3.54 to get a conversion. That's insane. It's absolutely insane. I, I, I don't know why it's like that, I, it's, it's, but it's a perfect example of why you need to be doing this, why you need to be looking at this breakdown. Like you guys could take this campaign. I'm actually gonna go, sh I'll sh we'll show you what this one is. I'll show you, show you what it is. You guys can try to sell it yourself. Uh, preview. It's a caffeine. Uh, we were going after, uh, the store was Atomic Dollar Deals. It was a chemistry store and we were selling the, the chemistry, the molecule, uh, the molecule makeup, molecular makeup, um, or design, I guess, or, or structure, structure um, of caffeine. Right, so we're, we're, the, the cross, the targeting was uh, people who are into um, like science and physics and things like that, or maybe uh, maybe I went after the periodical table of elements or something like that, and they crossed it with people who went to Starbucks and those types of places, latte and lover, lover lattes and things like that. Right, so um, you guys could take this, go find this on on uh, AliExpress, put it on your stores, take that targeting that I just told you, put it on your stores, and go after the age range up here that looked like they were converting. Where's it at? Um, oh, we need to go back to the campaigns. At, um, you know, the age range of 35 to 44. Just go after that age range, okay? Hopefully you'll get some sales off of that. I, I don't know, but you could see why that matters, right? So, so remember what I was showing you on this slide back here? Does that, do you guys see that? Does that make, does that make sense? You guys, does that like, do you guys see why you would do the breakdown and go look at your reporting and how you could find helpful information just by what I just showed you right there? Cause that was, I didn't plan this. I didn't even know what ads I had in this ads account. I was hoping I had enough to even go up and go over and we only had six. So I didn't think we'd get anything good out of this, but we found that that's like a golden nugget right there. That's this right here. That's Facebook only showing to a certain segment of people. It's showing your ads to a certain amount of people. Now let's go find out why. We could probably find out why. This campaign is a PPE ad. It's a page post engagement ad. Now watch what happens. Watch what happens. I remember that. This is coming back to me now. I remember going over this in the, in the group. Uh, watch what's happening. We are going for page post engagement. And Facebook is somehow finding that it's going to get the most engagements in this age range right here, 18 to 34. So Facebook is spending money in that age range. What did it spend over there? If we go back to the spent, uh, it spent... Uh, between ages 18 to 24, it spent $68. And ages 25 to 34, it spent $25. And age range uh, 35 to 44, it spent $7, right? That's some powerful stuff right there. If you guys aren't seeing the, seeing the, the, uh, the importance of that right there, then you need to watch this video over several times, okay? I was, I'm gonna explain it to you one more time and hopefully you'll get it. I was targeting ages 18 to 65, Face, but I was optimizing for page post engagement. Because I'm optimizing for page post engagement, Facebook's finding, for some reason, it's finding that 18 to 34 is where it wants to spend my money. And so that's what it optimizes for, leaving out 
the people up here in ages 35. I mean, this is where this is caffeine molecule stuff. Like these are probably gonna these are are, are gonna be college students. These are gonna be like the professors, the teachers, and and uh, you know at the universities or whatever, or colleges, right, or, or high schools or whatever, right. So they're gonna be older age ranges. Well, the the, the high school kids and the college kids that are going and studying uh, science and things like that, they're gonna be clicking like and they're not gonna be buying it, right. So so it makes sense just looking at it. It makes sense exactly what's happening here that Facebook just showed it to the younger crowd and didn't even really try to show it to the older crowd. With that said, I want to make it very, very clear that if you were to split, so, so my next step would be to make a separate campaign or a separate ad set that only focuses on these individual age ranges. So I'll leave out the other age ranges. So that way I'm forcing Facebook to show my campaign to only that ad, only to that age range, right? So it will leave off the other ones. Okay, does that make sense, you guys? Okay, so that's the importance of looking at the breakdown because you can find out information that you didn't know. Okay, also a thing to, to realize is that it really didn't show it. Oh, let's go back to the reach. Yeah, it didn't really show it to that many people up here, so you don't know if the cost is going to stay that cheap, right? Once it starts to get into, you know, once it's shown it to 14,000 people like up here, you know, maybe you only get, maybe the conversions don't stay as well, don't stay as good, right? So, um, you know, that I will make note of that, but the important thing is, is that we found something that we could go after. Now I could, now I could change my whole campaign and have, I have hope here. This is a, this is a hopeful campaign, right? And you guys could let us know. Okay. Uh, same thing for this one, this campaign, I find out that both of my conversions were for the ages of 18 to 24. Everybody else had in the cart, but the people that are purchasing whatever this product is, was, uh, between the ages of 18 and 24. So let's actually look what it, what this was. Uh, uh, same, same necklace or similar, similar necklace might not be the same one. Um, we had a few of them like this cam lovers. Yeah. See this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. This was a completely different one. We were going after the young, young female crowd with this one and they would get, um, they, I think they would, I think these were just a bunch of deals. They were dollar deals or something like that. Right. So the young, younger, younger crowd was coming up or were, was buying this one because like you could see this is a pencil pouch or a makeup pouch, right? It says, excuse my language. It says, uh, it says fuck bitches get money in, in, um, in, uh, what are they called? Element form format, or I don't know what it'd be. Uh, but, uh, I, w I went to school for this stuff too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but they, so, you know, that's a college crowd. It could be a makeup bag. It could be a, um, you know, makeup brush bag or a, or a pencil bag or something like that. So it's like that younger crowd going after that younger crowd. Um, so it makes sense that this one would be, that Facebook would be showing it to the, uh, let's go back to the campaign level, that Facebook would be showing it to, or the, the buyers would be in the, um, in the younger crowd right here. But you could see, let's see what the spend is elsewhere. So the two conversions were at the top, 18 to 24, uh, which spent, which spent uh, $15, but then they're out of, Let's see, 20, 12, let's see, $40, $50, $55, 60, like 55, 60 bucks, right? Spent um, that didn't get any conversions versus $15, $16, got two conversions, right? I wouldn't have known that had I not went to break down and looked at age, okay? Right? Makes sense, you guys, right? So clicks, you guys are, uh, we, could, we could also look at clicks on this one. Well, we could, let's look at some of the, nah, we're not going to look at some of the other, the, any of the other stuff. Just be aware that it's there. Um, I'm not, I'm not targeting different countries or anything like that. Or, I, I don't even know if gender. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I was targeting, I must've been targeting uh, females on this one. And then I don't know why it's showing a male there, but whatever. Um, you could click around on some of these other ones to figure out, you know, like maybe you could figure out um, if I had Instagram going on here, it would show me, you know, maybe Instagram was where the conversions were at, or maybe you could look at devices, find out, you know, maybe it's, it's desktop where the conversions are at. Look at that. Actually, uh, iPhone is actually where the conversions are at over here. Um, let's see. So it's eight conversions at uh, $32 That's $4 conversion. Yeah. So iPhone has really inexpensive conversions. So, um, you know, you can find that out by, by, with this. Now that's not always the case. There's a lot of times where, where Android's going to have the cheapest conversion. So, uh, you don't know that except by going off of your reporting, right? Looking at your breakdown. 
Okay. Does that make sense, you guys? You guys, I, I hope that you followed um, all of that. I hope that um, you know if if that didn't make sense uh, from the very beginning, I hope that it made more sense by the end. If it didn't make sense by the end, I hope that by the second time watching this through, it'll make more sense, and that by the third time, or or maybe even by you know a week into actually looking at your recording, it makes more sense. That's again, I'm going to stress that. That's what's most important is that you actually get in and start looking at this stuff yourself. Okay, I just wanted to make you aware of the most important stuff, knowing the difference between the different types of clicks and the and the costs and the rates between them, and then the different types of conversions. The the um, you know numbers you should be looking at and how to look at the breakdown um, you know just be aware of this stuff and then just start getting familiar with it inside of your own uh, ads managers okay make sense you guys you know Mike you asked uh, why does it make why does Android or iPhone matter um, believe it or not it makes a big difference honestly it's a it's a whole different persona you know, a lot of people that are, uh, a lot of people that have iPhones are, uh, at, like myself, we're convenience type people. We like uh, things that, um, you know, we'll, we'll spend more for, for convenience. Um, people on Android would rather have their, the ability to uh, have more flexibility and um, manipulate their phone, do things more on their phone, which creates a personality of, um, you know, you, you want, um, well, it's just a comp completely different personality. Same thing for a, a desktop. You're going to get people that are not on mobile phones that are only on desktops. Like that's a completely different personality than the people that are always on phone, on mobile phones and never have a, uh, never on their desktop. Yeah, it, it can, it does kind of come down to um, the money that people have iPhones have money, um, kind of. Um, but it's, it has, it goes a little bit deeper than that. So let's see, is there any more other questions in here? How many days did you run that campaign? You know what, I have no clue. I think we only ran them for a couple, like, uh, I don't know. It's probably like five or $10 a day and $120, so maybe a week or two between the two campaigns. Um, duplicate or go new, um, depends on what you're doing. Um, well, almost always duplicate. Yeah, yeah, almost always duplicate. Um, go new, I would, if I'm doing something new, you know, like new targeting or new, um, objective or a new ad copy or something like that. Um, okay, cool. All right, so that's it. I'm going to end it today, you guys. Um, thank you guys for, for joining for this webinar, giving me somebody to talk to. You know, it would get awfully boring if I was talking to myself, um, although I do find myself doing that at times. Um, it's never fun. So you guys take care. Have, have a good day, a good rest of your day, and jump into the reporting. Make sure you watch this over and over and over. And uh, somebody take those campaigns. Somebody take that, that, that coffee campaign, the uh, coffee molecule one, and run with it. Take care.